Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and in this video I'm talking to you about Antex Fusion RGB fans, how to set them up, wire them, and connect them to your system for RGB control in various different ways. You saw them there in the Antec P20C along with the Vortex 360 mil cooler. But in this video I'm going to show you the wiring logic and what you get in the box and talk you through the setup process. So I've got two boxes, one triple pack which comes with a controller and then a single fan as well separately, which doesn't. So I'm going to show you the logic for both of those. So it's easy to understand how you connect these up and how you use them and what you need to do in the BIOS and other things to sort them out. So it's well worth getting a triple pack. I'll start off by saying that, especially if you're planning on multiple fans in your build, because it will make life a lot easier. These Antec fans sport two cables. One is RGB and the other one fan power. And then you'll see the design it basically has the RGB ring around the front, which is where the air is pulled from and then the sort of standard non-RGB side is where it exhausts to. Now inside the triple back, you obviously get three fans and then the controller itself, as well as a few different cables. And I'm gonna talk through the logic of these because it is interesting in the way it works. You can connect up to five different fans here to this controller, and then you have hardware level control. So that you'll see there's two buttons on this fan controller which allow you to change through the different modes of RGB lighting and also adjust the speed of the RGB effects. But there is also a cable that allows you to connect up to your motherboard so you can control the RGB lighting from there instead. And that will be worth using because depending on where you put this controller, those buttons might be difficult to access. So that's worth bearing in mind. So this controller is gonna prove very useful if you have loads of fans in your system or even five, obviously. <laughs> because it will mean you don't have to connect this up to your motherboard. Now, it is possible to connect these cables up to the motherboard because they are standard connections, so I'll show you that in a second. But with this controller, you have these two cables. One, this first one that I'm showing you is the RGB connector, and that goes to the side marked LED on here. You'll notice it has three pins grouped in a set of two and then a single one. They are split apart. You can only plug it in one way, and I'd recommend being careful while doing so so you don't bend the pins. The fan power then plugs into the other side of the controller, and that then means that the fans are getting both RGB and fan power from this device. Now, this does require SATA power. I'll show you that in a second, which comes from your power supply unit in order to power the fans, obviously. But it does mean that everything's controlled from one single thing. Now, the connection to the motherboard is from this cable here, which has a small connector on one end that plugs into the controller, and then the same sort of logical connections for your motherboard. So you have an RGB cable and a fan power cable. So plug the small end into the controller and then I'll show you where the other end plugs in. Just bear in mind I'm only showing you this now outside the case, outside the build so that you can get a clear view of where things plug in. And you'll see that obviously the fan power connector connects up to your sys fan header, see an example here, or chassis fan headers on your motherboard. These will be on various different places, so I'd recommend checking out the motherboard manual to find out where they are, but you can see some clearly marked there. You should find markings on the motherboard themselves, and they look like this, so just slip into place, just push that connector down. The RGB connector is then goes to the 5 volt RGB header. If you're fortunate enough to have these, they look like this. Again, three pins, similar to the same connection on the controller. These can prove a little bit tricky. If not too careful with them, they can bend, so take care with that. And then the controller needs SATA power. So this is the flat power connector that comes from the power supply unit. You should have it with your PSU. And I've done a PSU wiring guide that I'll link to in the description, which will make life easier if you're not sure what cable does what. And then that is basically the whole system as it stands. Now I want to show you quickly the logic for a single fan. So if you've only bought a single fan, that doesn't have the controller, obviously, but it does have the same logic. In the box, you get the fan and you get some screws, obviously, attaching it to the case. But then you've got to deal with these two cables. Now you can apply the same logic. You can connect up to a system fan header or chassis fan header on your motherboard for the fan power and then the RGB connector will go to the RGB header. Now you'll notice on this motherboard there's actually three 5 volt RGB headers on there so you could in theory connect up to three fans but obviously if you've got more than that then it's going to prove a problem. So the controller is definitely worth getting. Now you can see here that the controller allows you to change through different RGB lighting modes so you can press a button on it and it will swap into different RGB lighting around that ring but you can also press another one 
to make these go faster or slower so you can basically speed up the animation of this. Now, in most builds, you're probably going to want to put this controller at the rear of the case to keep things nice and tidy. And the Antec build that I did with the P20C, I did put it at the rear. And yes, theoretically, you could pick a mode that you like, set it with the controller and then just leave it. And that might be the easiest way to do it if you're sort of happy with a single RGB mode. But if you want to change regularly, you end up then having to take the back off your case to access these buttons. So it's much more logical to connect that 5 volt RGB header to the motherboard and then control it with the relevant motherboard software. That's going to be something like Mystic Light for MSI, Azusa's Armory Crate, RGB Fusion and other things. And it's worth noting there's a different cable for gigabyte boards included in the box as well, but it's the same sort of logic. It plugs into the RGB header. So again, you can see that the front of the fans is where the RGB lighting mostly shines, and that is where the air is going to get pulled from. So an example here, I'm mounting a single fan at the rear of the case, which will exhaust air out. So the RGB lighting ring faces into the case. That will then pull the air out, the warm air out, and push out the back of the case and I'm also going to apply the same logic to the fans that will sit on the radiator, which is obviously separate. Well, that's the, the Vortex all-in-one cooler that I've done a video on separately. So if you want to see that, have a look at my channel and you'll find it. And um, what we need to do is basically run all those cables to the rear of the case. So try and keep things nice and tidy. You'd put the controller at the back because otherwise you're going to end up with a mess of cables around the front. So I'm applying the same logic to the front fans. So I'm going to put those three fans on the front of the case and then run those cables to the rear. And obviously I've shown you the wiring logic of how to do it and plug them into the con controller. But now I'm showing you some of the end of the build so you can see that as it's actually gonna be finalized. And we're going to set them up all with the same logic and connect them up nicely back there. Now the controller does have a little sticker that you can apply to the back of it. This is double-sided and a little Velcro addition in there as well. It is well worth planning out what you're doing here though because what I found was I mounted it without sort of thinking about the cable length because you've got to think about where the cables are in the case and how far they're going to stretch because obviously we've got to plug in the RGB and fan power from each of those cables and I'm running fans from the front and from the rear so I thought positioning it here in the middle would kind of work. But what I found was that the, one of the cables was a bit too short. Now I have run it through some of the cable channeling and so it was getting a little bit tight. And I think this is important to point out. So before you mount the controller, as I've done, make sure that all the cables will reach. Otherwise you might end up with a problem. It might have been that maybe putting the controller where the SSD is mounted, that Kingston drive, might have been a more sensible option because that would have been more central and perhaps then all the cables would have been easy to access. But because it's on Velcro, it's fairly easy to reposition if you do need to, which is pretty nifty. And obviously I can also then just loosen some of those cables. So I've actually got it cable tied, but this is an important point of planning out your build. I'd recommend not using plastic cable ties until you're sure everything's in position and is working properly. That way you can easily reposition things. That's why I prefer to use Velcro when doing the initial build. But that's the logic of that. So then just plug in all the cables as I've shown you. And then you can boot your machine up and you should have some nice RGB lighting. Now because I've got the controllers for both these devices, so for the cooler and for the fans, plugged into the motherboard, we've got the same RGB lighting across both devices. So both lots of fans all have that same RGB on them. If you don't do that, you will have different RGB and they may well not be synced because the two control boxes aren't talking to each other. So you might end up with different RGB on the fans that are on the radiator versus the fans that are on the case, for example. So I would recommend using the motherboard software because it would give you better control. And when I've done it here, it's just defaulted to those obviously the rainbow effects. Once you get into Windows, you can download the relevant software and then tweak it. Now, one of the other things that's worth doing is heading into your BIOS before you get into Windows and setting the fans into PWM mode. So mash delete when you've pressed start. And then we want to head over to the fan settings. So uh, here is Q fan control. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose the chassis fan header or system fan header that we've selected and put it PWM mode. From here, you can then also adjust what the fan speeds are going to be. So you can see you can choose standard, silent, turbo, full speed or manual. You can set a fan curve of when they should ramp up. So if you wanna keep things kind of quiet, 
you can adjust the position and make sure they don't spin up until things get a bit hot. Also, once you applied this and then booted into Windows, you can then customize the fan speed from the relevant software as well. So from the motherboard software, and that should make life a bit easier. And then obviously also you can adjust the RGB lighting in there as well. Hope you found this video useful. Check out other videos that might pique your interest in the description below. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.